Howdy gamers, let's talk about the runes for Jax top lane. Um, I'll briefly mention jungle at the end of the video, but the, his primary role is top and it's where he's best played at. So starting off with the keystone, it's going to be conquer. Um, it's really his only option. Uh, you could run grasp, but the problem with the grasp is that um, there's champions that use it better. And with a champion like Jax, he benefits so much from bonus AD and then also through building up damage um, when he's after he's like on top of a champion. With Grasp, Grasp becomes more of a trading tool. And with Jax, um, even if you're taking short trades against the enemy, you have lots of ways to build up the Conqueror, and then therefore just deal more damage. With Grasp, again, it's kind of like a short trading tool. Every four seconds in combat, your next basic attack against the enemy champion will deal bonus magic damage equal to 4% of your max health, heal you for 2% of your max health, and permanently increase your health by 5. Like, all of that's okay, but you do miss out on a lot from... The Conqueror Keystone, and then your um, path into the Resolve Tree. Like Jax makes okay use out of it, but it's not the highest value. Um, for starters, like the first row here is almost entirely useless. Demolish only matters if you're winning. Font of Life, it just has no synergy with how Jax wants to play out, and then he has no way to proc Shield Bash either. So um, there's really no good value there. You do have a good option, and usually Second Wind or Bone Plating. Um, and if you were playing, if you were running Grasp, I would assume you would run Second Wind, as it would just be giving you more healing um, throughout the laning phase. And then for the fourth rune, you have the option of Overgrowth um, or Revitalize. And I, Overgrowth would probably be your highest value, as it would give you um, more HP. And then with that HP in combination with Grasp and the healing from Second Wind, in combination with the re resistances that you gain from the ult, it would effectively make you tankier. But Jax is more about um, amplifying. Once he's on top of someone, to just simply deal more damage and then survive through um, having the, either the threat of his damage or through killing the enemy champion. And uh, you can get the you can get the best parts of this rune tree in second wind and overgrowth uh, through secondary runes as well. So that's why I really don't see that. So back to the Keystone Conqueror. With Conqueror, basic attacks for spells that deal damage to enemy champions grant two stacks of Conqueror for six seconds giving you bonus attack damage and stacking up to 10 times. Um, whenever a Conqueror is fully stacked, you heal for 15% of damage you deal to champions. So this, and in combination with how Jax's passive works, um, with Jax's passive, you want to be building it up so you have more attack speed. And then once you have the attack speed, and better yet, if you're past level 6 and then you have the third hit, that's when you would jump onto the enemy and then start just auto-attacking them over and over. And then you would start building up Conquer. Conquer would give you more attack damage, and then that would give you more damage on most of your uh, abilities and auto attacks. So with Conquer, once once you're on top of someone too, having that extra AD becomes more more valuable as you're going to have more attack speed from the passive. And if you don't have this extra AD, yes, you could be healing every four seconds. Every four seconds is kind of an eternity in terms of an all-in whenever you jump on top of someone with, with Jax. So like you could get two grass procs off, or you could simply be dealing more damage with every single ability and with just your auto attacks as you have so much attack speed once you build it up on Jax. So I just think the synergy is way, way higher with Conquer. I don't, I don't really think anyone's really contesting that. Um, and then again, the benefit of Conquer is building up the AD and then having this tool that helps you once you're on top of someone. And if you're trading blow for blow with them, if you have Conquer and they have Conquer, um, it's an even fight. But if you don't, then it's not. And then if you're on top of an enemy AD and support, having where you heal for 15% of the enemy or champion, the 15% of the damage you deal at champions is going to be more impactful um, come mid to late game when you have a TMA item completed or when you're just simply on top of them dealing more damage. So. It's really synergistic with how Jax wants to function, and you really don't even have to think about it when playing the champion. It's just like you get on top of them, and you just simply deal more damage and then heal a little bit because of it. For the secondary runes, uh, I think it's going to be Triumph. Um, it's really hard to get value out of Overheal on Jax. He's not a champion like uh, Fiora that has like natural healing in his kit. And then the mana offered from Presence of Mind just isn't necessary. You're not going to run out of mana with Jax. It's just not going to happen. And pretty similar to what I was saying with Conquer, you're really spending your HP as a resource um, to deal more damage and be useful in a, in a fight. So with Triumph, uh, takedowns restore 12% of your missing health and grant you an additional 20 gold. The 20 gold is kind of icing on the cake. And 
one v ones this can make or break like your survival especially against top laners with ignite or against champions with damage over time um in 2v2s that's where you start getting better value out of it so when you're fighting with your jungler against the enemy jungler and then 3v3s and then the real value comes in 5v5s where this will proc for every single kill or assist so so long that you're damaging the enemy champion that dies then you're going to be restoring health and then that's going to effectively make you more useful in a fight for the third rune you have the good options in alacrity or legend tenacity alacrity giving you attack speed and then legend tenacity giving you tenacity you do have to think about your matchups um, whenever you're whenever you're trying to decide like which run, rune to run um, in the top lane it, if the enemy champion has like any cc it would make sense um, even the champions that have like micro forms of it it makes a good amount of sense so if you were to play into nasus or something the tenacity would help you against his wither if you were to play into um if you were to play into renekton it would help against his w if your e was on cooldown if you were to play into well, if the enemy doesn't have any CC at all, then that's when you really just switch to Alacrity. But if they have even a micro form of it, then you, you don't need the attack speed from Alacrity. But if you don't get any value out of the Tenacity, then you might as well run Alacrity. You also need to think about the jungle and support matchup whenever you're considering which one to run. As if you're playing into um, champions like Zac Jungle, Thresh, uh, Nautilus, Leona support, then... Legend Tenacity plus Merc Treads is going to make you basically immune to their CC come into late game. Um, it's going to be a lot less impactful. And through that, you can actually stick onto targets and be more useful. So really think about the matchups that you're playing into whenever you're deciding which one of uh, these runes to run. As they're the primary thing that you're switching up in the rune page. And if you're looking for a default, then Alacrity is going to serve you best, I suppose. And then for the fourth rune... You have the good option of Coupe de Grasse or Last Stand. Probably want to go with Last Stand. With Coupe de Grasse, you deal more damage to targets who are below 40% health. And then with Last Stand, you deal 5 to 11% increased damage to champions while you are below 60% HP. And then max damage is gained to 30. So where Jax is weaker early, this has higher synergy. And even if you're strong, come mid to late game, it still has really good synergy with this kit. As if you're tanking 5 champions, then... They're going to be amplifying your damage by getting you to lower amounts of health. Or you can survive at lower amounts of health pretty easily because of Conquer, Sterex, Jack's resistances through his ult, um, maybe even like Lifesteal from, uh, from um, Ravenous Hy Hydra or something. You have lots of ways to survive at lower amounts of HP and be pretty comfortable at that. And at that amount of HP and with Last Stand, if you're at lower HP, then you're, you just have this percentage damage increase that you otherwise couldn't get versus um, Coupe de Grasse, where you deal 8% more damage to champions who are below 40% health. Um, you don't, unless you already have a winning matchup top lane, then you don't really need this. And even if you do have a winning matchup top lane, um, Last Stand would help you in a 1v2, or it will even help you in 5v5s, even if you're winning top lane. Um, so with Coupe de Grasse, like, it's kind of like a win more rune versus Last Stand that's like always going to be useful, um, regardless of the matchups. There's probably a few instances in which like that's uh, irrelevant, but those matchups are probably pretty obvious. For the secondary runes with Jax, um, I think Inspiration with Biscuits and Time Warp Tonic is going to give you about your highest value. Jax has a lot of options in his secondary runes, and you can make a lot of arguments for them being like kind of useful. But again, it's mostly just about... like. Uh, Surviving the early game and then scaling through his items and through his levels versus through his runes. Like if you were to have scaling in, let's say, resolve with conditioning and overgrowth, if you were if you had a non-matchup top lane, this would be completely fine. Um, champion like Malphite, Malkai, etc. Champions that are basically minions and roll over to you. Sure, you can run something like this, but if you have to endure the matchup early, um, biscuits and time warp tonic are going to help you do so, and then also help you like turn a fight like if needed with biscuit delivery you get a biscuit every two minutes until six biscuits restore 10 percent of your missing health and mana consuming or selling a biscuit permanently increases your mana by 50 so if you don't end up using them then they give you a little bit of gold and if you do end up using them um, you want to use the biscuits as you're at a lower amount of hp as they restore more for your missing health so they help you in all ends they can also help you if you've exhausted all your mana in the lane with time warp tonic 
Consuming a potion or biscuit grants you 50% of its health or mana restoration immediately, but puts a consumable on a short cooldown and also gives you 5% movement speed while under the effects. So Time Warp Tonic in combination with Biscuit Delivery and Corrupting Potion is going to make it so that even if the enemy like gets a jump on you, um, you have this... You, the utility of Time Warp Tonic is gaining the HP immediately, so even if they have the jump on you, they might ne not necessarily have a lethal on you, as you have the movement speed to walk away from them, and you also have more HP and mana immediately to play with at that point. So if you're using it defensively, it's good to save you, and if you're using it offensively, it will help you finish off the enemy, um, especially in 1v2s, and especially if the enemy has lots of ways to run away, as you get access to 5% movement speed that you otherwise couldn't have without this rune. And since top lane is such a long lane, then it gives you the more movement speed to run them down. So that's where you get a lot of value out of uh, inspiration is the bait potential, uh, the defensive potential. And then through the utility of having this and surviving early, um, you inevitably scale into the mid to late game as if you're not dying early, then you're probably winning on jacks. And if you're not being denied a lot of CS. So it will also help you in that sense too. Maybe the enemy is not just necessarily all in you but with their poke and whatnot it'll allow you to get cs more comfortably especially in the early levels where things can be like just one hit into lethal so gives you a lot of flexibility you could also run something like uh, sorcery second with null orb and transcendence if you're into an ap matchup champions like rumble mordekaiser etc and then with transcendence um, most champions in the top lane especially bruisers can make use of this room page as with transcendence you gain 10 percent cooldown reduction at level 10 and uh, top lane is about the second fastest to level 10 because they get the solo experience. And then this in combination with the Null Orb, and then in combination with uh, the matchups that you'd be playing it into, ch champions like Rumble Mordekaiser, it helps you match their like, mid-game scaling. And with the cooldown reduction, it's just going to give you more Ws, more Qs, etc. So not a bad option at all. And since those matchups, especially Rumble, would constantly be pushing into you, um, missing out on the laning tool could be excusable in that case. With Domination Second, this is probably your lowest value option, as um, you can get something like this and this. Uh, you could also get Taste of Blood and Ravenous Hunter. The problem with Ravenous Hunter is that it heals by your abilities. It, I'm pretty sure it would heal you off Jax's passive auto, but even with that, um, the healing amount, like you would have to outweigh Biscuits and Time Warp Tonic with that. And then, so Taste of Blood and Ravenous Hunter could be more useful at like minutes. 12 to like 17 but Jax is trying to survive from minutes like 0 to 10 and time warp tonic just helps you do that a lot better so that's that with that page it's really really low value and with sudden impact you just don't need that extra damage you don't need the extra magic pin or lethality whenever you're jumping on someone so that's my thoughts on Jax runes if you have any questions leave them in the comments and if you're really interested in jungle you would probably you could just run this exact primary page and then with um, the secondary runes, you could go Nimbus Cloak and Water Walking, as Nimbus Cloak will help you stick onto targets, because you, you blue smite them, they're slowed, and then you get the extra movement speed from Nimbus Cloak to chase them down. And that's really important as Jack's Jungle to be able to chase someone down in the lane. And then with Water Walking, you gain more movement speed through the river, and then also gain bonus AD. So it helps you fight for Scuttle Crabs, and it also gives you more speed whenever you're approaching the enemy um, for a gank. So... If you're really interested in Jack's Jungle, that's your best bet. Um, same thing, Domination Second would just be lower value versions of what you could get from Sorcery. And yeah, there's also this option of a cheese, a cheese page that I just don't recommend. But if you're playing into something like something that's really weak early, usually mage top laners, champions like Rise, um, Cassiopeia, etc., you could run this. And with this page, um, you start Q and you just Q onto them level 1, you auto, 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 and then once your Q is off cooldown, you do it again. And then once you're level 2, you do it again, and you just keep doing that. And then that wins you the matchup, and then you would run the magic assist because you're into those matchups. But it's a complete cheese page. I don't recommend it. Don't tell anyone I said it. Anyways, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I answer literally all of them. If this video helped you, leaving a like on the video helps me. If you're interested in watching me play League of Legends or talk about it some more, you can check out my Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash Nelson. Links in the description. And if you have anything to add about like your op your opinions on Jack's runes or whatnot, you can leave that in the comments too. If you know something I don't, let me know, man. I just 
might not know it. Anyways, hope this video helped. Bye-bye. See you later. Love Jax. Great champion. He's probably in for a rework. Like, he's one of the oldest champions in the game, man. Let's be